Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'll be looking at 10.2 forces as vectors. 10.2 represents chapter 10, section 2 of the person A level mass applied mass year 1 textbook. Let's have a look at the key facts of this section. Let F1, F2, and F3 be three individual forces. The resultant force R is defined as R is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3. When a particle is in equilibrium, the resultant force vector is defined as 0i plus 0j. These are the key facts of 10.2 forces as vectors. I'll be implementing these key facts within two exam style questions. Here is exam style question one. An object is in equilibrium at all under the action of three forces F1, F2 and F3. F1 is equal to 2i plus 7j. F2 is equal to minus 3i plus j. Find F3. Let's have a look at the solution. Ladies and gents, we are first told that the object is in equilibrium at all. So I can start by writing the object is in equilibrium. So I've got the object is in equilibrium. This implies that by definition, the resultant force R has to equal 0i plus 0j. But the resultant force R is given as F1 plus F2 plus F3 the sum of the three individual forces. So F1 plus F2 plus F3 is equal to 0i plus 0j. F1 as a column vector is just 2 and 7, plus F2 as a column vector is minus 3 and 1, plus F3 is equal to 0i plus 0j as a column vector is 0, 0. Now, if I add these two column vectors, I get minus 1 and 8 plus my F3 has to equal 0, 0. So if I rearrange, I get F3 is equal the 0 vector in two dimension, 0, 0. Take away the column vector minus 1, 8. Therefore, F3 is equal to 0 minus minus 1 is 0 plus 1, which is 1. 0 minus 8 is minus 8. Hence, F3 is equal to the column vector 1 minus 8 newtons. Or, you can write this in IJ notation. So, F3 is equal to I minus 8J newtons. That there, ladies and gents, completes exam style question 1. Moving on to exam style question 2. A particle begins at rest at the origin. It is acted on by three forces, 2i plus j newtons, 3i minus 2j newtons, and minus i plus 4j newtons. Part A, find the resultant force in the form pi plus qj. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. I'm going to start by saying let f1 equal the first force vector, which is 2i plus j newtons. I'm going to rewrite it in column vector form for simplicity. So I've got 2 and 1. F2 is the second force vector, 3i minus 2j newtons. As a column vector, this is 3 and minus 2. F3 is the third force vector, which is minus i plus 4j newtons. As a column vector, this is minus 1 and 4. The resultant force R is defined as the sum of the individual forces. So in this scenario, it is the sum of three forces. F1 plus F2 plus F3. This implies that R is equal to 2 and 1 plus 3 and minus 2 plus minus 1 and 4. So we have that R is equal to 2 plus 3 is 5 plus minus 1 which is 4. That is the i component. 1 plus minus 2 is minus 1, plus 4 is 3. That is the j component. So r is equal to 4 and 3 newtons. Therefore, in ij notation, the resultant force r is equal to 4i plus 3j newtons, where p is equal to 4 and q is equal to 3. This completes part a of exam style question 2. Moving on to part B of exam style question 2. Work out the magnitude and bearing of the resultant force. Let's have a look at the solution. 
I'm going to start by drawing the resultant force 4i plus 3j newtons on a coordinate grid. Here is my coordinate grid. The horizontal axis represents the i-axis, which is x. The vertical axis represents the j-axis, which is y. So I've got 4i plus 3j. That's four units to the right, 4i, and three units going up, 3j. So that there, ladies and gents, is my resultant force, R. I'm going to redraw this triangle. So I want to work out the magnitude of the resultant force denoted by this notation here. That's what I'm after. 4i, the length is 4. 3j, the length is 3. Now to work out the magnitude of the resultant force, I can simply use Pythagoras' theorem. So square root, 3 squared plus 4 squared. Hence the magnitude of R is equal to 5 newtons. Now I want to work out the bearing of the resultant force, R. How do we work out the bearing? Well, we start from the north line. Okay, so here is my north line, the vertical axis. And then we have to measure the angle going clockwise to that resultant force, R. So I can put a question mark here. Now to work out this angle, I need to first work out this angle. Let's call it theta. Theta. How do we work out theta? Ladies and gents, we can simply do tan inverse of opposite, which is 3, over adjacent, which is 4. So that is my theta. Now to work out the bearing of the resultant force. I can see that this entire angle here is 90 degrees. To work out that question mark there, the bearing, I simply do 90 degrees take away theta. So that would be 90 degrees take away tan inverse of 3 over 4. To one decimal place, this bearing would be 053.1 degrees, 1 dp. That there, ladies and gents, completes part B of exam study question 2 and this teaching video 10.2 forces as vectors. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.